Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Hello. Reserve time. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> Dire team ban. Classic. <laughs> Radiant team ban. seconds remaining yeah pretty big win for them obviously you know picking up one of those little bts americas always good to get those little confidence booster up and coming na teams so yeah i mean it's epicenter games this is uh forgive me here i'm all over i'm in sea i'm in china we are lower okay dire team ban Uh, from what I understand, they are all moving to sunny Arizona to form a team house. Dire team pick. Dark Invoker. Radiant team pick. Faceless Void. Dire team ban. Yeah, I guess it's just, um, it's definitely one of those comfort heroes for a lot of people, but it's one that they've been running extremely successfully. Uh, they won the vast majority of their games at BTS America's, at least, looks like they won their last really five games with the Dark Seer, so I'd be pretty comfortable with it at that point, I think, you know? <laughs> I, I might consider running it again. And then the Invoker, always a nice little combination there. And you can always look for those kind of four roll aggressive supports to be roaming around that Dark Seer. Obviously, the Earth Spirit's banned out, Ten but seconds, doesn't stop you from getting something like the Night Stalker, the Spirit Breaker, even just the Bounty Hunter Ten hanging seconds, out, who's also still in the pool. So, a lot of great options for Sam. You can pretty much tailor your draft to do whatever you want um, with the Dark Seer, really. Like, you know, he can kind of go jungle, he can put lots of pressure on any sort of a safe link carry. Solid stuff. Dire team ban. I should have seen that one coming. Radiant team pick. Yeah, it's perfect, right? Just uh, pair it up with that Darks here, so. A good old time. It's kind of a, it's a nice hero for pressuring the OD as well. Because if you have a Spirit Breaker or you have your Night Stalker, you run in on the OD and they're just going to get Astral imprisoned and OD's going to run away. Whereas the Tusk, Snowball, you know, no worries. You're going to get in there, you get guaranteed stun. Now, OD, of course, is the option to imprison uh, himself, but it doesn't really give you the same defensive capabilities because uh, you can just block him with the Ice Shards. So this is going to be a lot of heavy pressure if they decide to put that OD in the mid lane. They might want to consider going back towards something like the Death Prophet, just because she would do fairly well against the Invoker. She's much tankier. You can still run the safe lane OD, and she also syncs up really well with the face of the void. So they're, they're not totally, you know, done for uh, in this draft or anything like that. But I do like the way that Shazam, I think, is making them think about how their lanes are going to go and where that pressure is going to be coming in. Dazzle. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. 
Yeah, now you're kind of thinking, like, how can you up um, the advantage that you're going to get out of this minus armor? Like, what sort of a carry can you get that's going to be able to help out with the damage during the Chronosphere? Instead, are you going to look towards maybe that Sven that we saw? Um, the Sven Void, it's fallen off a little bit, whereas, you know, you know, face is Void, I'm going to Chrono these guys, you stun those guys, and we're going to win this fight. But when you have the Dazzle, Dazzle you do tend thinking about damage, so I, I don't think they're going to go, like and get a razor or anything here um but uh, i'd like to see you know a little bit of synergy coming out there but i don't want to see like a lichen you know two single target you know i can't get in that chronosphere at least give me the sven you know a little bit of cleave a little bit of control radiant <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Juggernaut. Dire team back. Hmm. It's kind of interesting that they go for the Juggernaut there when there's something like maybe the Ember Spirit is available. Uh, if you're already going to be considering the OD into the mid lane, I, I guess it just shows that they're considering the Juggernaut for the Healing Ward up against the Darkseer, so they're not going to be committing to any other hero. I guess they out that Dazzle for zoning out the Disruptor, which means they might be looking for something like an Enigma or potentially, uh, you know, anything with that kind of greedy edge to head into the jungle. Um, I don't know, but Juggernaut, obviously, with the Faces Void, he doesn't offer any sort of control as you were just mentioning there so I, I don't know how well it's gonna be able to synergize with the chrono other than of course the omni slash is an option there and i don't know i'm a little bit risky here but i trust in the bloody nine you know v9 god coming in here he's got the power yeah you gotta believe I mean, I'm just trying to think of a support that nicely ties this all together. A little bit more lockdown. You don't want Astral Imprisonment to be your only thing that can stop a TP just because it does have a bit longer of a cooldown. Usually something that you use at the start to catch up to someone. So if you don't have another way to stop them from TPing away, if you don't quite have the damage yet, maybe it's early game, they're just getting out. Well, yeah. Probably Which just one? be the witch. Oh yeah, he's banned. Okay, we're we're clear. Yeah, yeah, no, I was I missed them for a second there. No, I did the exact same thing. I was like, well, they've still got options. Oh no, nope, they're banned. So <laughs> it's gonna be the clinks from Shazam though. Yeah, so they've run this a couple times at least. Oh, it looks like it was just once recently with BTS, but. Uh, it was up against Infamous, so and typically seen up against like your gyrocopters, um, even like your dooms, really. Anything with like kind of that lower armor, someone who wants to stay kind of still, the big single target focus. So it would have been pretty nice if they did go for that Death Prophet. Might have a hard time doing uh, anything up against this Juggernaut, but he is pretty good against the Faceless Void, I guess, just for like. I mean, Faces Void, he's good up against the burst damage, but Five eventually, you know, Clinks can really lay it on you, so it's still going to be hard for him to stay in the lane. Like, Time Walk has a really big cooldown early, and he already has to deal with the Disruptor, who's one of the best supports against the Faces Void because of that consistent damage. So, their lanes are looking really solid right now, which should give a lot of room for the to kind of roam around and apply pressure where needed. I think there's a lot of... Obviously, Tusk is somebody who's similar role to the good old Earth Spirit, and so we'll see whether he can be as effective. It does feel like he's got a lot of nice answers. Of course, the OD can generally astral imprison yourself, make sure the Dazzled TP's in. At the very least, they'll get off the Shallow Grave with the four seconds, uh, seconds duration of astral, but it still it might end up making this mid lane really five rough. Seconds remaining. Spirit Breaker. All right. Okay. So this is kind of like your anti, you know, nature's prophet bounty hunter, and it'll be the invis of the clinks that they'll be handling here. This is a bit of a, I want to say a little bit of a risky spirit breaker pick. Doesn't do that much in synergy with the faceless void. Um, obviously, doesn't really have the best setup with the OD. I guess you could astral imprisonment while the charge is on its way to get yourself a little bit closer in the chase, but. Uh, it's not your typical, like, paired up with the Darkseer is very common. Um, maybe paired up with even someone like a Night Stalker as well. Just, like, you can go for, like, a three-roll Night Stalker and then go with the hyper-aggressive four-roll Spirit Breaker. Those are the kind of things that you typically see this used with. 
Uh, this will be a little bit unusual, and if he doesn't get really rolling in those first two, three levels, that's where Spearbreaker really falls into trouble. You don't get that early Midas, uh, and you, you don't really contribute that much to your team. Agreed. I think both sides all have a little bit of a problem where if the Tusk, if the Spirit Breaker aren't getting enough work done, they're going to be in trouble. Although I feel like there's more ways for the Tusk to catch up. You've at least got that Ice Shards to spam stuff down. Spirit Breaker, you just have to grudgingly sit there and hit everything. Could be, could be a rough one for Bloody Nine, but we'll see. I do like, obviously, as you mentioned, Spirit Breaker picked up to help with the Invis against the Clinks. Might be able to get some kills up there. Play their cards, right? Oh, I have a random question here. For your client, since the spring update, can you open console in the middle of a match to put in stuff, or does no, it not I close? I can open the console, I can't close it. Yeah, same here. Then I have to, like, restart the game. It won't let me do anything. Yes. So annoying. I can't use, like, any of my configs while casting right now. Oh, um... Because I haven't done my auto. I know I should just do my auto, but I always just put them in myself. If you want, Crazy. I can give you the auto stuff. That's okay. In between games. It's, like, two lines of code. I know, mine's all messed up, though. Oh, it's I, okay. Well, we'll figure it out. Either way, <laughs> sorry, this is, I know, the, I had the same thing. Mine was all broken, I fixed them, and then there was a, like, mini patch, and they were all broken again, and I was like, Valve, I hate you. But we're going to see the normal rune split now. OD versus Invoker. This is one where, as the OD gets level, she tends, or he tends to do a bit better. But at first, I'm hoping that MSS, he should have the advantage, and if the Tusk roams just right, could result in some easy kills for him. Yeah, a lot of this is probably just going to come down to where those supports do come into play here. And, and right away, you know, putting that pressure on from B9. Yeah, they're just going to... Oh, they actually don't. I thought they were going to get some Alki Noble stack ups, but no. Mojo forced to drop a tree and eat it. Happy little trees all over the place. So up top, what is this? We just got poor Frempo having a rough time as a... Uh... Hazel's Void. Do you just, I think you just actually try to give up this lane in jungle. Obviously he needs a little bit more experience, hoping to get, oh, that is not the ice shards he wants to be on the side of. Frempo in a lot of trouble there. Yeah, I think Frempo was considering the fact that Tusk is going to be moving around a lot, because you can see he bought eight tangos as well as a salve. So he's already committed to the lane, uh, not going for that iron talent early. He doesn't really have the option of being efficient if he goes to the camp and... You can see the control they're having here with the clinks and TC just denying this up here, man. I mean, TC's the master of the consistent carry, so he's going to sit here, hold his wave, and it's going to be a pretty rough time for Frempo. It looks like he is reluctantly heading there. It's going to be slow going, though. I... I don't think he has another option. This lane is not one I think he could face this void into. Uh... I don't know what is the best play there. Obviously, he does need levels. You're really expecting a lot to happen when he hits that six and comes on in, but it'll have to wait. In the meantime, Brax just gonna get charged up, just getting rid of that clarity. Um, now Brax though, Sojourn off to Bloody Nine, and there is an ice shard that will push him away. So Bloody Nine should be able to walk it off just fine. Yeah, so this is the kind of stuff he's looking for, because now he sees SVG down to that bottom rune, you know, hanging out with B9, he's like, sweet, I go back in the lane. They have the Observer, but they won't be able to zone him out with just the Disruptor. It'll be annoying, but all that regen should keep going. He sees a south too, though, man, he is... Yeah. Not a nice life. In mid, though, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a lead for MSS, but actually nothing to really write home about, obviously, with que Creep Equilibrium now being pushed back to WWD. This should even itself up. So... I think OD maybe is past the hurdle of facing the Invoker. Yeah, it's a uh, interesting matchup there. Basically just kind of depends on how much help you're going to be getting. So WWD, currently, his supports have already said to him, like, look, we're not coming, so don't bother leveling up your Astral, and instead, go right into the Arcane Orb once he's his... This way he can just try and pressure uh, MSS as much as he can before those levels come out and lost, and uh, what it appears to be, it'll be the X-Sword as well. So, you see, the more he gets into that, the more mana regen he's going to have, because yada, yada, yada just want to pressure as much as you can early because every level on the invoker like OD obviously very level dependent too but every single level on invoker matters so much right in the lane just because of what it's going to be opening up for every each one of his spells and how that's going to impact the ganks and the cold snap and... it, it's a real mess here WWD just wants to be like no get out of here well, Juice on the bottom, they've pushed the Doxy out of lane, but of course Doxy has the easier pullback on the jungle, he's doing fine. Let's talk game plan some, because as we mentioned, girls, they have the obvious synergy with the Chronosphere, stuff like we getting off lots of Arcane Orb procs with OD to build up a big in-stack. Uh, before that though, you know, before, they have to get this Faceless Void 6, and so it does feel like before that, 
I'm not sure how they make stuff happen. Is it just around Bloody Nine on that spirit breaker? Uh, I, I'm honestly, I don't know. This is like the uncharted territory <laughs> with the spirit breaker right now. It's uh, it's rough. Like, just not playing that traditional role that you usually see the spirit breaker in because he doesn't have the option of being that aggressive. That is really gonna hurt him. Uh, it's it's kind of like whoever can get levels. Like, look at Frempo up here. Oh, yeah, he... Oh, does manage to not get quite caught in it, but he can't walk around it either. He's in a little bit of trouble. 19 more seconds till he has another time walk, and there is the... Oh, no, the kinetic field has been put up in Frempo. In trouble, the auto attacks the Shallow Grave manages to come out. He still doesn't... Oh, he glimps back into the river. He should be going down here. One last auto attack, and TC will be getting that first blood. All right, well... They uh, don't have any options for stacks. They don't have any real way to make this spirit breaker hurtful. I guess hope is that the aggression will kind of not be too crazy from from Shazam, and then maybe juice down here. You can kind of push into that tower, use the uh, the healing ward or something, and try to pressure this lane. I, I don't know. It's gonna be a pretty rough game, I think, for the spirit breaker right now. And in general, like, is he ever gonna be that threatening to TC? The first Chronosphere is going to be like godlike with the OD. Yeah. I think, as you mentioned, a lot of this is going to be hanging on Frempo's head, and he's unfortunately only level 2, while we can see that Brax already up on level 4 on that dog seer. WWD does manage to avoid a gank there, but again, it just might not be enough in the grand scheme of things. And Shazam actually have a lineup that once they get that mech up on the dog seer, can group up and push quite easily. Obviously, TC will do a lot of physical damage. Yeah, it's not like your know, lineup's gonna fall off or anything like that. They're not scary, you know, they're not uh, just scary now and then later we're gonna fully catch up and everything will be fine. It's just a pretty balanced lineup. TC, maybe this would help. A little bit deeper Ooh, with the they dust. They even but... dropped the dust. I'm. There's no hope of finishing that one off. And while this should secure Frempo, maybe level 4 actually won't even do that. I'm. Unfortunately, that gank just not landing. Be nice. She's like, whoa, dude, you're only level three? Like, oh, what is this? <laughs> Even if he were higher level, I'm not sure that they have the damage output between the two of them to kill the clinks. No, it's pretty unlikely. Oh, SVG. Look, look at him, just boldly going. And he's slapping down a very nice observer ward here, trying to get some vision of uh, a Frampo. And oh no, he he quit. He's just faking it out right now. Oh, WWD is taking quite a bit of harassment from MSS, but now the charge coming in onto him. MSS going to drop that ice wall, but that doesn't stop the auto attacks. They need a couple more, unable to get it. Tazzle even in the mix, but now there's the alacrity coming out from MSS. There's also going to be, oh, he needs one more auto attack of Bloody Nine Managers to get it. There's the Shallow Grip coming out of WWD, but there's no escape. He has no points in that astral Crystal, and he just has to sit there. Sanity's Eclipse, one more auto attack, and he gets the Invoker, and finally levels up that astral Imprisonment. The auto attacks, can he get the heal off here? No, unable to. To, on cooldown, Brax coming into the fray a little bit late. I don't think he got this his goal. But what a nice salvage from WWD. Yeah, that was look horrendous. MSS making the big plays. The, the bold maneuvers, not going for the ghost walk, but instead for the ice wall. Uh, you know, thinking that he was going to survive, be able to turn around and get the damage, and not just run away with the ghost walk. So he went for it, and it did work out uh, right until the end. You know, he manages to clean up Bloody Nine and comes back in for the OD, and the hammer got dropped. I think he realized only one dust had been used up in top lane, so he wasn't sure that he could have just gone for the ghost walk. This, this is also true. He may have, I mean, he may he may not have, he may have, may, I, I have to assume that he wasn't, like, trying to be greedy. It is MSS. <laughs> uh, but... While all of that happens, of course, relieves a little bit of pressure off on Frempo, who is now almost level 5, which is kind of an achievement at 7 minutes for this Faceless Void. While, uh, Brax almost level 6, but I would say more interested in seeing him get the gold and something like the mech up ASAP. Yeah, I guess the, uh, the major benefit is that he's been left totally alone down bottom for our Juggernaut here. And Juice, he's not getting a ring. Uh, he's not getting drums, at least not by the looks of it. It looks like it's just a straight Battle Fury rush, so... Uh, obviously you can go for this when you have no pressure, but it can be a little bit rough if anyone starts to show up in his lane. Bloody Nine, Static Stormed Up, Sunstrike... Oh, uh, he, <laughs> he's still trying to walk, but unfortunately the last little zap will get him. Brax actually getting the false hit. Interestingly on Juice, I feel like they did this in another game, uh, did not go for any stat items on their jug, and they didn't have a mango that time, and of course he was unable to Omni Slash a number of times, so I'm really happy that he's carrying around that mango today. 
Uh, mid lane TC is coming in for this early roam. So it's I mean they have the sun strike ready. Okay, they're going for it. They're gonna open it up. There it is. The cold snaps immediately the Astral onto TC. WWD trying to get on out. A one more auto attack. TC does manage to get it off, but no! What just happened there? Instead, Dazzle gonna help them out. And it looks like everybody escapes from that gang. What just happened there with TC doing very little damage with that last auto attack? I know OD popped his wand. Yeah, that's all it was. It was, wand. It was just the one pop being enough. It looked looked a bit weird. So the uh, oh man, that that was so close. Quick play, just to make sure that you do go for the quick astral on top TC. A lot of OD players, you know, you'll typically see them kind of panic as Brax is. He's panicking down about that surge, but. Oh, oh, now, nah, there, there, okay. we're hitting now. Yeah, yeah, they do actually have a mango with the ready fight. Oh, look at up the Omni Slash! And he's able to get the kill. Another close whip for the lineup of Shazam. Drew's still trying to juke it away. He has to get out of this one. He does not have any sort of defense. He manages to walk around. The creeps are still there. The charge being toggled around. And will Juice make it out? Trying to get away. Fun coming in. Or as we said, Dunk Monster. I believe he said he was preferred. 420, I Dunk believe, Monster was his requested name. Yeah, yeah, is his name that he was hoping we'd call him in the lobby. It's a little bit a little bit hard to remember, but we'll try to keep it up. So, uh, Juice getting away. Yeah, he, he won the 50-50 on that tree turn, so that's all that matters. You know, living. Mango gaming saving lives. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, also true. Buy your mangoes, kids. You're playing Jug, you're playing Sven. Bring that thing to lane. You know, you'll be thankful. Um, and just very pertinent, I mean, especially as you mentioned, he didn't go for a stat build, so. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm just checking out things, making sure the stream's running. Uh, there's like an issue on Twitch's end where I just keep seeing it buffering, and I'm like checking the other stream on my computer, and it's fine, Classic. so. Um, I'm pretty sure we're good, <laughs> but now the players are having lag, you know, we've passed it on to them. I actually... I'm surprised that so soon after a patch we continue to play competitive matches because, for example, this patch broke a number of things. <laughs> um, and even, I know a lot of people have been reporting issues with inputs dropping. I just don't know. Do you think that we should take a hold when that type of things, like big patches, drop? I mean, it would be nice. but Well, I mean, what should happen is that the test client, like, you should still be able to use the past patch, like everyone should have it available to use for competitive, even if you're going to force everyone in pubs to use the new one. That's what it should be, right? That would yeah. make the most sense. Um, but that's not how we do it, so there's no time. Games must go on. Tournaments must go on. We can't delay anything, or everything's just going to get blocked up in the end, so I think it would be really ideal, though, if there was, you know, tournament patch, something that at least, you know, everything's got bugs in it, but at least the one that we've been using for the past while, just to make sure, like, I know there were some claims that, like, PL was just crashing games, so, like, can you not pick PL right now? Um, yeah. Might be handy to have that last patch on hand. Um, and enchantress changes that weren't quite mentioned in the patch. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I think that's a good solution. I agree with everything you said. I just wondered about other folks' opinions. Now, SVG has managed to get up Volcane Boots, which is pretty good on the support task. Also level five, not shameful considering he's been trying to roam. Unfortunately, not as much kill involvement. A lot of these attempted ganks just haven't worked. It's okay, he's at, he, actually he's at, what, 50, 50 for his team, we'll, we'll give him that. And then I just even 66% of the enemy team, because he died twice, so... I'm a little surprised that Shazam's attempts haven't latched as well, and obviously this Dazzle being worth his weight in gold. How many of those things have taken either a lot longer with what happened in top, or just not happened at all, given mid and bottom? Yeah, and we also talked about just the fact that G has been pressured a lot, but it's also because he is the Juggernaut, and been, of course, pretty handy in the ways to make sure you'll be okay. Looks like WWD spotted again by TC. Now, will they have the damage? They have the ulti, so I guess yeah. they will. They should and be able to is. kill off WWD. Here they go, just dropping that storm on his head. WWD quickly going down, manages to drop the veil, but not enough. Is there any sort of backup? The charge comes on through. Will the snowball stop him? Bloody Nine there at the ready. Doesn't have that level six yet, so he'd have to rely on dashes. There is support coming in, but another kinetic field. Repo dropping a chrono spear, but already the sun strike coming out. He's trying to kill off OVO. Fun should go down in one more auto attack, but Frempo has to get on out. Man just to use that time walk away, and I believe that should be the end of things. Alright, well, at least he was able to clean up one, so. First Chrono's a success. Bags himself 535 experience, 362 gold, and every little bit's needed because that lane, a little bit of a disaster there. Start building up in towards that Vlad's standard build that everyone seems to be going for these days on the Faceless Void. 
I think all things considered, the game is going a lot better than I expected for Gossip Girls. We were discussing, oh, we have a charge out in middle onto MSS, but he immediately throws out the cold snap, and guess who's here? Savage at the ready, has a snowball, Frempo, without much mana, but of course does have the time warp. He does get on out while Merryweather <laughs> healing up his friends. Although there are a lot of Shazam here. TC, oh, he could just pick off that courier. Decides against it. It'll fly over his head again. TC looking for the bigger prize in enemy heroes. I haven't really found anything. Yeah, top lane, WMG is right on top of our decks here. He wants to go for this. Does he have the body blocks? He might have vacuum trees. Oh, okay, we've got two TPs in though, and I don't think WWD can go for it. Also, oh, Snowball coming out. WWD is gonna end up. Uh, glimpsed backwards into a static storm, but now he'll walk away. Ice Child's not quite keeping him in it, but guess what? The Sun Strike landing right on his head. He's trying to use all of his regen to keep himself up, but it looks like after he comes out of this one, he will be going down. Oof. My heart. Yeah, I think he wanted one more arcane and he was going to go for the Sandalies on SVG, but wait, oh, did he need Juice? And Juice, can he? He will. Strafe ended there. Able to get on out. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it's a pretty sick play in some sense you're like, oh, I've like boxed him in, I'm gonna body block him and kill the stacks here or something, but there's a disruptor, so you gotta be really wary of those TPs, and, as well as the uh, tusks. Those are like two of the catchiest supports that are still even picked right now, and like anywhere is competitive. Yeah, I, I was going to... I was gonna say before, the point I got distracted for by all those kills, that uh, when Gossip Girls played Archon, it was a clear case of Archon just a little bit out-skilling them when it comes to map objectives. You know the classic, you may have more kills, but the other team has farmed much more efficiently. I think girls in their subsequent matches against Freedom, and now here against Shazam, looking a lot better, although they are falling a bit behind Shazam, but that's all within one team fight's worth of gold difference. Yeah, the uh, the team fights, and then the fact that WWD is just not farming right now, right? Like he just killed twice, uh, pretty, you know, out there position, so he's not getting a lot of time for just lasting those creeps and TC pulling away himself as well as the Invoker. And it doesn't seem to look like they're gonna get Brax here, so they're just yeah. a little bit too slow. Not the smoke of dreams that they were hoping for. Meanwhile, both teams focusing on their opponent's safe lane towers, getting those down for big old map control. Some pretty standard Dota exchanges gonna happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for girls' sake that they uh, don't make this TP down here. Looks like TC's gonna show, so they definitely won't. A little trade arena here. Every time I much faster push. You were saying? Oh, I was just gonna say every time I click the tower, I, I like freak out. I think a call bounce happening. <laughs> All the time. are saying that yes. Um, and then obviously seeing uh, spawn camps, ranges, and stuff with the alt thing. Yeah. Life, it's interesting. Um. Other interesting things to note, so WWD, of course, we, he, he went for the Veil. It's not a bad item at all, it's one of the cheapest ways to get int, um, and it gives you good armor and so on. But, it's not, he's not really helping out anybody else, I think the no, most like synergy- awful. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I wasn't trying to say it's awful, I was trying to be a bit nicer on it, but, like, what are you working with here, Bash? <laughs> Uh, no, it's a good, I actually think it's good. I have WWD, like it makes sense because he's behind and it's going to be helpful with his drums. He's getting a lot of stats built up so he can live a little while longer, get off a couple more right clicks, and in the end that's all that matters is an OD, but it is like the most unfortunate ally lineup to be getting a veil with. There's like nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's, there, there really is just nothing else. Like, nobody helping him with this. I just, I wasn't... Uh, obviously, maybe there'll be some little bits of synergy, you know, well, I'm waiting for the Chronosphere with the Veil and the Spin from Jack <laughs> on the edge. Yeah, he but, needs a Maelstrom, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, it's just, um, it's not the easiest, I mean, it's odd. He might go and Ato's next, he might just go straight for the Sheep, depending on how this game goes. So, I think he's got plenty of options, but he needs to find somewhere to farm. Now he's just standing here, not taking these lost hits from Deuce or anything, so WWD has his work cut out for him. Yeah, a lot of his game is going to be almost entirely dependent on Frempo as well as Bloody Nine. Like, the fact that they made it this far and they're not, like, way behind is good for them. It's just because Bloody Nine does have the Nether Strike and now he's, like, actually a support because he can charge through the fight, target one single person, and honestly, it's pretty hard for them to interrupt his Nether Strike. There's, like, Vacuum, um, Tusk might have to commit a few spells, but he's generally going to want to be, like, dealing with that Dazzle, so... 
I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, as long as he can, you know, knock people, knock some people around, WWD can maybe go into that BKB next, I might imagine here, just so that he can actually get something done in these fights. I, I can kind of sense that maybe he's feeling a little lackluster. Nice. Oh, back. Uh, Bloody Nine, though. He's going to manage to use that Nether Strike, heading over the kinetic field. There's going to be a vacuum under tower. Bloody Nine going for a little bit of a charge away. And it does look like they'll disengage. Shazam getting the much better end of that trade since they finished the tier two. And nothing really to be found here by girls. They need to be careful because I may have spoken too soon. They are losing out on map objectives, control, and obviously bomb. Yeah, and one thing they're missing right now is like observers with sentries placed. Just because you have the spirit breaker, right? So I'll oh, carry your snipe, thank you. Yeah, TC. Easily done by TC when he has that vessel already up and they are not responding. TC, the rest of Shazam starting to come over to back him up. He may end up opening on WWE. They have the glimpse range now. Okay, if they're able to get it off, there's gonna be a sun strike, a war response to keep him inside by WWD. He will astral imprison himself up, but there's no support rotations coming out from goal, so this should just be his death. TC racking up another kill. Yeah, they need some way to keep an eye on TC. He's gone totally uncontested. He was able to just go straight for the Desolator. Still hasn't died. Plenty of fire, plenty of tower kills now. He's rolling in the dough right now. As you mentioned, unfortunately, a lot of that you need to put down observers and sentries so that you can see his rotations in. But with their dazzle so strapped for cash, I can see how they're not super willing to take the expense on goals. Yeah, you just lose so much potential of your Spirit Breaker. It's just like, what's the point of charging him right now, right? There's like, no one else is going to be able to be there, but when he's actually roaming on your own side, you might have a shot at it. And again, though, WWD, like, so much focus on him. It's a rough game to be that kind of a player, you know, here, but... Uh, not exactly the best hero for bouncing back. At least he did go for these tankier and more efficient use items if they can manage to find a decent, like, engagement. Because I don't think we've really had a team fight this whole game. That's another thing to mention, right? The fact that we've seen one Chronosphere so far. I believe so. A lot of uh, Goals actually has thrown out a number of smokes, and none of them have really hit their mark. Obviously, a little bit of that to do with the, their lack of vision. That was, you know, they smoked when they couldn't see anyone here, and it turned out the entirety of Shazam were in the Radiant Jungle. But you have to find something. Why pick up the Faceless Void if you're not going to use that Chronosphere effectively? Yeah, Shazam are just doing a great job of not even giving them the opportunity to. Uh, they're moving around the map when when they know they're on the opposite side. They know they have the tower pressure of the clinks, so it's not really... You know, the onus is definitely on girls to make this kind of stuff happen, and they don't want to be just ganking SVG. They want to have that chrono ready when they find C, and he's just like, nah, no, that's okay. You know, they've already cleaned Aegis, and there's no real pressure for them to head anywhere. They're, they're farming so well. Brax is just ahead of the mid, and as well as the offlane over there. Really doing a good job on Shazam of keeping the tempo of this game in their favor. They're making all the calls, as you mentioned, and now MSS, giving it a little bit of going for Empo, although nothing that's too lethal. I say it's TC wandering around from behind. Let's see if he can get something done from over here, but Frempo back and on out, and actually they're pinging almost right where TC is. I don't think they had vision, but I think they're a little bit paranoid. I'd be pretty what? paranoid after last time. Okay, they definitely like old, old, old crap. That does. Thank you, Windows. Um, I they like pinged right here, so I think um maybe they saw the edge of that. Sigil. Oh, the solo pressure here. Frempo is just like so hesitant. He's like, well, I see the invoker, but he has an Aegis. Yeah. Oh, this is totally not worth it. I think, unfortunately, oh, that will be the Aegis going down. going to be a super long Roche respawn timer. I actually like how um, Frempo is so patient here. He knew that there were more behind the Invoker, and I think I'm willing to just jump one. But with that, Shazam scatter again, and I don't, I'm not sure before this game ends we're going to see anything more than, like, a one-man chrono. I can kind of sense that uh, uh, one of these next few pushes is going to end up with kind of a forced engagement from Gossip Girls, maybe just that single man chrono, maybe onto two lesser priority targets or something like that. TC will come in from the side, he'll start cleaning its buddy up, SVG just saves an ally, and, and that's just it, you know. As long as the Invoker doesn't die in the chrono, uh, MSS is going to be coming out with so many options. Oh, yeah, Invoker again, Ice Shards, Glimpse backwards. Uh, it's going to be folks coming back in. Oh no, they've already picked the Tazzle off on the sidelines. Bloody Nine trying to do something, but everybody's old. Already dead before Frempo able to come in now. Silence up, vacuum back. No wall being dropped here. Brax is like, we'll kill you all without that. They're gonna drop the Sandy's Eclipse, but WWD had not built up enough in, and now 
Johnny Shetty that he may be able to kill off Brax here. There's the spin going out. One more auto attack should bring him to his knees. The Sun Strike gonna miss onto Frempo, still running around back there. Never dropped his Chronosphere, so he could drop it to get on out. Not even gonna. Unluckily, not gonna check for that rune, which would have been a nice little regen, and TC will probably finish him off in one more. He manages to walk backwards for the supports. Coming around to cut him off. There is a snowball and an ice shell at the ready. Ice shells off the mark. Snowball should be coming in soon. Frempo just spamming that time walk, and it's gonna get him on out while at the same time up in top lane. Emma says he's gonna be charged upon. Do they have detection for this one? We'll see. Him on coming that. out, they do. Chris they still have that one dust. They're actually gonna get it on him. Bloody Nine's still going. He's gonna get gunned backwards. And where is MSS? He jumps up. Up to the top has that blink dagger and now the rest of the team being surrounded on wwd needs to ask for himself to set a war is he's finally going to ask for himself but now he's unable to attack in the chronosphere the rest of the team coming on over juice he's got a spin at the ready but that's about it svg just going to go for the tp away is he really going to get out of this one they finally bring down tc oh fun walking it off though around the tree and they get to the biggest win for goal so far but it just doesn't feel like enough much Oh, well, how did it set? They had the Dazzle and the Spirit Breaker died for Brax. So, I mean, that was a pretty good set. And the second half, obviously, it's not ideal. I mean, you'd love a little bit of a wipe here, but uh, they don't lose Dying Juice, which is pretty important. Don't attack. want to slow him down. He's kind of like the one big hope here. Uh, I don't know. Did WWD go down only, well, I guess only once? I believe he did yeah, die. Yeah, he did die at the beginning. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I think he actually... Okay. I'm no, just he gonna got glimpsed and he lived. Yeah, he totally lived. I think he lived because of the astral glimpse interaction weirdness. He's just um, been having a rough game, so he has four deaths already. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, but it, uh, it was pretty pretty good. And actually, something I feel that we're seeing a lot more in competitive Dota. Obviously, a lot of people are like, oh, OD, such a OP hero. But in a lot of the competitive Dota games, teams recognizing that if they shut the OD down early, he has a really hard time finding the space to catch back up. He is a squishy hero. All he has is Astral. So I think Shazam have done a good job there. Either way, a little bit of their lead cut in half, but they're still 5k ahead. And last time, it was without too many kills that they brought themselves up to 10k. Rax now with the blink and almost has those dotty and greaves if he wants that yeah that fight was a little bit on brax just because like i, I do think the wall i i kind of understand why he didn't throw it down because i know he was low on mana but he also didn't get off the mech for that fight um just because he got a little bit too close to wwd Gee, lost some yeah paint, but you really got to get the mech off could have made a pretty big difference i agree i think if he had back walled them there um three of those heroes i think at least two of which got away probably would have gone down Actually, I think all three of them ended up going away just because Frempo ran the path of... Wacky. Yeah, that was quite the escape. Yeah, <laughs> I did I... not. I did not have faith that he was going to get out. Daedalus going to be up soon on TC, only 400 gold away from that. We have another smoke coming out. Doesn't look like anything sort, but still, you're chasing after an invisible hero. TC's not the easiest to catch. We do have Bloody Nine hiding in the trees. He could give them a go onto Savage, but surely they won't be a prey for this smoke. Yeah, the uh, the general things are coming up from WWD, and he is correctly suggesting where they are, so uh, that's a pretty good start here. They're backing away, though. Nah, they can tell this is uh, on the move here. I mean, look where they were, right? So, the, the general, like, oh, no one came all through here or through here. Like, I, mean, I wonder what they're doing, guys. Also problematic because it's the last smoke that they had for five minutes, you know, they've been very aggressive. I like to see this girl trying to take the tempo back, but none of these working. As you mentioned, you just need to de -ward, get the map control back before you can make those plays, because Shazam have too much knowledge right now when it comes to what's going on in their opponent's side of the map. Yeah, it's a little bit rough. They, what do they have? Just basically Dazzle's going to be uh, popping out some sentries here. Don't have a lot of options for like a gem or anything. As nice as it is to have when you're down is kind of one of those comeback items. Seems unlikely they'll be able to uh, afford it here on either of these supports unless they want to stop a Bloody Nines building, but... Looks like he's going for, I mean... Could be a medallion, could be blade... No, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not super sure. I'm assuming it's just going to be... Could be uh, medallion into eventual solar crest would be kind of nice against blinks. Yes. But. Actually, that would that would be near. That would be very good. Obviously, there's not much else I know of that you're doing against TC. They just did not draft other than the Chronosphere, the significant lockdown, and we've seen they haven't been able to get those two to synergize so far. Frempo is invisible here. Um, SVG has a blink. Oh, that's what he Ooh, decided to finish up. Oh, this could be really nice. They have any detection right here. 
They have uh, nothing. Wow, Frempo could have like major setup potential. Oh, the oh no, his invis is about to run out, so he does manage to go onto MSS. But where is his backup? There's gonna be a snowball oh, nice. in the static storm drop off to the side. He does get Horus punched up, manages to jump over the ice shards, but Bloody Nine in there, gonna kill off MSS, and now Frempo back in the fray. They're gonna give it a go onto Fun, who just immediately goes for the TP out, and they can't all. Oh, okay, Astral Imprisonment, you know, now just drop that veil on top of good magic damage. Either way, Fun will go down, and another two quick picks. Girls. All right, do we get YOLO plays or what? What do you got for Axe? You got a Blink Dagger, come on. Don't let um, me down. You and SVG, you're yeah, gonna let they this go? Blinks. They're There's not no gonna let way. this go. This is gonna be something funky going on. There's gonna clip be back the... Oh, he actually already used his Blink to get the clip back. You. One of them, of course, gonna be able to get down. The charge comes out as well, and OG jumping on over to Frank. Drops the strategy, <laughs> the clips, and SVG will fall as well. Girls doing such a good job there, and you wanted to see something spectacular, not quite going the way you wanted. <laughs> it's not even that, it's just, you knew they were gonna go for it, and you knew there was like a 90% chance that that's exactly what was gonna happen. Ah, uh, Dota. They, just, they felt the need though, you know, that burning desire of like, nah, we got this, it's fine. We're two heroes against a fully stacked team, did thing. Ah, uh, good stuff, good stuff. They're making the game interesting. Mm -hmm. gotta, gotta love some, uh, some Sam Dota. Yeah, and I don't, I think, while I maybe don't agree with Brax also going in there, I think it would not have been awful if the Tusk jumped into the pit with the Blink Dagger in an attempt to steal the Aegis, you know, maybe Ice Shards out, if they had some vision with the Sigil. That type of play, you lose a Tusk, he's third to last on the net worth chart, and you potentially steal a Roshan. Sounds good to me. That's true, that, that would have been pretty great. Alright, uh, they're just looking for that highlight clip, you know, they want to get the odd shot. <laughs> and no such luck. Very true. Now, Frempo, he is suddenly an incredibly rich man. This Faceless Void, going from being level 1 for like 4 minutes, to has almost 4,000 gold here. What do you, what do you pick up? Do you start trying to deal damage as well? Do you go for something else to help out with the initiation force staff to get you over those ice shards? What, what's the play? Ooh, I don't know. I guess if you win this game, it seems like it's going a little bit longer. Uh, but if you want to like a Maelstrom, is that going to do anything? Hmm. Does he, does he just go for the BKB? Kind of like the risk play, but it does mean he doesn't get glimpsed back every single time if he does, uh, you know, hit a nice blink chrono, so that could be kind of the play here. Guarantees he gets off his time dilation. There's, uh, I don't know, some games it's nice to go for, like, maybe the, the more utility item, like a Lotus Orb or something, but there's nothing that really warrants it here, so... Yeah, what are you gonna do? Glimpse the Disruptor? Yeah. <laughs> the more it's not great. Kinda, I kinda um, like the, uh, either the AC or the BKB. Agreed, both of those could really help out, especially since this Disruptor, as poor as the Dazzle is, Disruptor, not exactly standing far above, so you're not gonna Let's be seeing an axe anytime soon. Oh, that's true. What, oh, 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 what is... DC has a DD, and they see him, he runs right into them, DC should be going down here, DD or no. The traps expertly laid, and Juggernaut being the gem carrier working out well for goals. Yeah, I, I totally blanked on Eggman after Frempo. I was like blowing it there. So yeah, that makes oh, sense. No, Let's get oops, that going. I was saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, totally. That's exactly what I was saying, Mott. I'm really, yeah. I'm really smart. That's uh. Yeah, we're yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're not both sometimes. No, getting... total idiots. Not forgetting like the best eggs upgrade in the game for 60 second chronos when you're losing so you can actually get a kill and then also defend your base. Well, that's not us. Yeah. No, don't be ridiculous. Um, I have actually heard Complexity call you invaluable plot, so I know that one was actually 100% on me. So. Oh, alright, we'll go with that. Yeah. So either way, we're going to be seeing a siege coming out. As you talked about, they have a lot more flexibility all of a sudden because Faceless Void has that Aghanim Scepter up. And with the gem as well, life a little bit more difficult for TC. Just going to take that tower uncontested. They're all grouped up on bottom of the Shazam, but I don't... I mean, maybe some chip damage. You lack pretty one of those creeps. Oh, they're going for it. Onto Bloody Nine, looking for a kill here. He does have the blade mail. He's gonna be under the static storm, but blowing your static storm of Bloody Nine, they will get the kill. Can they get on out? Oh, Trevor big running chrono, forward. Big will chrono. they be able to drop the chrono speed? He stutter steps and doesn't go for it. The hesitation. The Agnum Scepter. Sometimes you, had you the gotta. Blink on the OD too. Then some major plays. I think, as you said, just. Maybe a bit precarious, understanding that they were at a deficit. I'm sure they could feel that. Feeling good because they've gotten a lot of kills recently, but not wanting to give another up. Um, I'm really interested that Bloody Nine did decide to go for the Blade Mail. 
Yeah, I can kind of dig that. It's uh, good against the clank, right? There's like nothing he can do until he actually goes to that BKB, and he knew that he wasn't committing to it early, so kind of guaranteed that you can at least get up inside the fight, and clinks can't kill you, and lots of AoE coming up from the Invoker, too, so pretty solid when your big old beefcake that's the, the Spirit Breaker. The be literally the beefiest hero in Dota. Maybe Earthshaker. They're both pretty cowy. Yeah. That was pretty bad, actually. Thank you. Yeah, uh, no problem. Um, <laughs> now we're... <laughs> OD has finally gotten some sort of defense. He's got a BKB up. He is not hitting like a truck, but ready to fight. He hits like... I guess he hits like a pickup truck, but not like a, you know, UPS made of steel trucks. So Right, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Exactly. So, uh, WWD could actually be a bit of a force to be reckoned with. His team is working to invade the enemy jungle. Spirit Breaker now holding that gem. They're looking for something that they will not find, but Tier 2 able to be taken down, so maybe that's the next rotation, although WWD manages to blink before the Morris Punch goes off, actually on the right side of the ice shards, depending on how you look at it, and this should be an easy pick off onto Savage. He'll buy himself a lot of time, his team, very happy with that. Oh, actually, is he? Okay, just going for the casual blink away, Bloody Knight. Oh, unable to get the charge off because he dropped the on. And now... Oh, seriously? Okay, well, they're still chasing that SVG. He's being charged up, and they will finally bring him down with a little bit of the magic bash from Bloody Nine. They're chasing into the base. Ghost after popped by Fun. They're gonna go with the Astral Imprisonment. Everyone else from the side of Shazam kind of ditching Fun out at the tier three. He goes down. EKB was popped here by WWD, so the regrouping, they're backing up towards where the former tier two tower was middle, but they don't seem to be going home. So now they are about to amount. Uh, a siege here. MSS <laughs> sit for our back. Got his Midas. He's like, okay, oh, wow. you're living. Yeah, holy cow. We're back. We're on the team of three. There's going to be a wall drop, but now we're just seeing folks spin it around. A bloody nine does not say no. He's going to get your stuff, and he may be able to secure them. The tier three, but instead, they're going in on the DC. He will fall. Bloody nine somehow still alive, and finally, the cow goes down. They're jumping forward on the MSS. He is getting taken out quite a bit there. Will they catch Brax as well? It looks like that's a yes, and they'll maybe even secure themselves the gem. The blink away coming out from Savage. He's going to get on out to safety. Who is picking up the gem? Prepo trying for it. He does manage to grab it, but now there's a snowball coming on him. He can just chronosphere. Savage is taking a right beating here. Prepo will end up having to walk away. There's an EMP on the juice. Doesn't matter if he goes down. He doesn't have a gem. And MSS still chasing. Savage is there. Prepo may be wishing, wishing that he didn't use his chronosphere, but locks their cooldowns. He be beat out. He is going to be safe, and Frempo blinks away. Again, sorry about that crash. I... Love this patch, everyone. I love, love, love this patch. <laughs> well, that was a pretty chaotic fight in the end anyway. Uh, as far as I can tell, honestly, it kind of comes down to the fact that Shazam just don't have those defensive items. Obviously, that's what gave them a pretty big edge in some of these fights, where they were more organized and they had the lead, they had the initiation, but in that case, like, no BKB available there for TC, so he runs into a little bit of trouble there, kind of the same thing with MSS, and that's the Fusal Blade just, like, racking it from Juice. That was pretty sick, and... Quick pick off of the Disruptor, like, Fun has been doing so much work every single fight. Like, the Roshan fight was the first time that his uh, Static Storm didn't play as perfect. I think not having him there made it hurt. Yeah, it just seems like, obviously, they've taken a couple team fights back to back, but as you said, a lot of this falling on the itemization, yes, there is a huge experience lead for goals now, but, I mean, Clinks doesn't have a BKB up or anything, TC is very easy to control, even if he does have a BKB, having to deal with that Omni Slash or getting caught out by the OD, just, and Brax, he has his Shivas up, but again, that wall vacuum just didn't do enough work. Man, this game just like suddenly got interesting. I mean, yeah. Juice has just been like hitting creeps for so damn long. <laughs> Buys that Diffusal Blade, kills a couple heroes, and he's 5k ahead. Fun, getting run at. Yeah, there will be another strike to get him inside of that, and now the Chronosphere as well. Frempo does not care about the rest of you. Brax actually blinking on into it. There's gonna be a thumb strike. Should be able to hit on the Bloody Nine and back and back. But WWD is here now. They do end up dropping the wall, but Bloody Nine just charging on through. Going in on the Brax. He will fall. And Ju girls looking firmly in the driver's seat for this one. Frempo standing right on top of SVG. One more auto attack from the OD. No uphill miss for you. And with that, tier 2 in top should be easy to take. Unfortunately, they do not have the que creep equilibrium in middle. Oof. Shazam! I mean, this is a team that 3-0'd Infamous. And they are not looking like they're having a good time in this series. Yeah, Bloody Nine is just like, hit his peak, man. He's angry. 
like, yo, I, I want to win this game. I'm just dialing in on people. Frempo, you follow me. We're going to set up some chronos. It's going to be great. Uh, they're just taking it to them, honestly. Like, uh, what, what even happened? I guess WWZ, you don't need that much farm. Get a couple right clicks off. That's all that matters. Just chilling on 3,600 gold. Why don't you think it'd be cool? Okay. Nice. MFF's gonna throw out a tornado on an EMP, should be able to drain a pit of Lana, but no one really getting punished there, and WWD still feeling confident. Standing up there, they're gonna drop the meatball just to clear the creep wave. Glimpse is at the ready, WWD, gonna just astral himself. Trying to make sure he ends up in a good spot, but Franco drops the old WWD trying to get on over. He's just got a Saturday's Eclipse, drains a bit of all of that. He actually needs to be getting up low, but he can't because of the sigil. And now Franco, he is a very low. He's managing to time walk it back off the old going on off out of the TT. Bloody Knight getting a kill, helping out with a kill there. Frax now in a lot of trouble, but Juice, he's jumping in onto MSS. He's just going to spin where he thinks he is. Gets the kill. Frax now getting defusals up and slowed down. Has to stand and fight, and Franco coming in to get them lost hits. GDs are cold. We're headed into game two with those up one. I just, I just don't even know. I, I had the big advantage there from Shazam from the team that all early games, just slowly building this lead over time. Good map control. Uh, we talked about the vision that they had, kind of sequestering in the girls' side. They couldn't really get out there, couldn't get anywhere. But the whole time, it was just farming it up there. Never died. 12-0-2 in on the back of the Juggernaut while he's on me slashing through them all, you know, just slapping WWE right up there and Frempo trying to